Hello everyone and welcome to our next episode of Raven Creek Park. And this week it's time to bring in our second animal for the zoo and the first one for YouTube uh, as we already placed the black tailed prairie dog in the live streams. So yeah, our first animal here on YouTube and it's gonna be the European fellow deer. Yeah, I was about to say white tail because this is the basically American equivalent, but it's a European fellow deer. And yeah, I decided to choose that deer over uh, basically a white tail deer or anything because one, we don't have uh, any American uh, small deers um, apart from the, ra uh, from the reindeer. And also because these deers are, at least here in Europe, um, very typical for the for this kind of small uh, animal parks, animal zoos. And they are also um, starting to be um, common in America because they are imported for hunting, sadly, but also for, uh, I think, they also are considered farm animals. Um, so yeah, it's not out of the um, order to have um, fellow deers in America. And so I decided to have them in here uh, as like this centerpiece of the zoo, this, which uh, divides the path into two directions. And basically it's very simple. It's just um, fencing off a bit of, of the woodlands and placing the deers in, maybe have an indoor area or a house um, in the, uh, somewhere close. And yeah, this basically is Basically, it no fancy um, decorating or innovative um, structures or anything. It's, it's a simple and yeah, this is basically what this zoo is uh, is about. And yeah, um, the idea for this zoo came, or for this habitat came me from a, another small animal park here in Germany I visited last year. Um, basically, it's the same, just fence. It's the same um, idea behind it, just in the middle of the woods and that's basically it and it was really cool to see them in this natural area but we are separating um the we are separating the males and the females from each other because males can be very aggressive uh, in the breeding season and to save the females um they are they will be separated all, uh, apart from when we want to um, breed them and for that matter we are or i am creating something which is called a creep gate um, again thanks to bongo bongo hardwood you might know him he does amazing stuff on youtube um, he uh, told me what this is called a creep gate basically um, allows the females the, um, the does um, to get into the male's yard but the males because of their rack because of their antlers can't access through the store and yeah so, so they are they can't follow the females if they want to get away from the male if the male is too aggressive or anything um, they can't follow them which is I think very important and you often see this in hoofstock areas where the males are bigger than the females and yeah as a little a bit of a side fact because we already talked about um, male deers are called bucks uh, females does and the babies the offspring um, you call a fawn um, we sadly don't have any fawns here um, so far in this uh, in this um, habitat, but maybe later they will uh, make some uh, cute little babies. And yeah, um, while we while you guys see how I just place all the enrichment items and food items, I can also tell you another small fun fact because I really love stupid fun facts. Um, Bambi from the uh, nineteen I think nineteen fifty five. Uh, Disney movie Bambi. Um, many people think it's a, it's a fellow deer because of its spots, but actually Disney based um, their deer model on the more American uh, mule deer and white tail deer. And I found this very interesting while researching for this species that how m very much a lot of people um, um, misunderstand this or and think that they are white tails because of this, uh, but yeah, in the original German um, fairy tale or folk tale, it was a roe deer, so another different species. But uh, Disney decided to go with the more American one, as the story is all set in America, which makes a lot of sense. And while I'm brambling and telling stupid facts, um, you may also consider giving this video a like um, if you want to, and maybe even a follow if you are really uh, happy with what I do. And I would be... I would be very um, yeah 
happy about it. I would be very thankful if, if you do that because it only helps me uh, making my videos better and making this channel grow so I can reach more people and I can uh, talk to you all guys and yeah so if you want to do a good um, a good deed today a good uh, yeah, a good task today maybe consider giving this video a like and you know you make at least one person in this world more than happy but yeah um, enough from me we are here for the video and not for me making advertisement and at the moment we are building the indoor area for um, for the deers and I decided to go with a more uh, block house, uh, yeah, wood, wooden house sty style of building uh, stuff or houses you often see in America in the woods, uh, in the more frontier, more um, uncivilized areas, uh, in, yeah, built out of, of, of raw logs and just placed into the forest. And this is actually, um, again, my second attempt. It's a common theme and now I think with, <laughs> these, with this zoo that I built something and then I decided uh, yeah, I, I don't like it at all and I have to start all over again, basically um, doing the whole recording all over and uh, I first I had um, to give a to give you a little bit of insight of my building process first I used the in-game lock walls and the ones that are that have vertical locks um, and I first I, I thought I liked it, but I wasn't really happy with it, but after a second look after the next day I just realized, yeah, this is not going to work. It looks horrible. Um, not, no offense to Frontier, they do an amazing job with their pieces, but this just didn't, um, yeah, ma didn't made it for me. And so I decided to scrap all everything. I already had everything like the stables in and the separation walls and everything. And but I decided to scrap it completely and redo it. And I think the outcome this time is much better, and I'm more happy with it. And yeah. Um, we are now building the entrance points for the females, or the, yeah, the entrance gate for the females, and it's rather big um, if you compare to real life um, entrances for deers or hoofstock. But just because of frontiers, uh, yeah, how they work or how their um, animal movement works, and I hope this will be at some point updated in the future. Basically, an animal, as you might, if you don't know it, an animal has to be able. To rotate on its own axis uh, at all time so it, it doesn't matter where it is it has to be uh, able to rotate and this creates some some problems especially with animals like crocodiles or bigger animals like elephants because a crocodile has a long tail and the elephant is rather yeah has a, a big volume and when they need to be able to uh, rotate on their own axis it creates it creates a giant uh, circle around them where um, where nothing has uh, can be, uh, where everything has, needs to be free, and yeah, this basically means you have to make a doors that are enormous in size. And I hope Frontier will at some point address this and make maybe maybe make the hitboxes a little bit smaller. Um, I would love to because I would love to, um, or I would like to make the doors uh, smaller for the deers because they aren't uh, they aren't big animals. They are rather slim and small. But um, because of this, um, yeah, I had to make them bigger as I've wanted. And what you now saw on the, um, on the screen is something I always uh, also recommend to everyone who is building indoor spaces is mark um, mark down what you want to do and where you want to do. You saw me placing these, um, yeah, these plates on the ground, these wooden um, planks, and it basically helps you to know where rooms are, where. I don't know stables are and um, to know where to want to place it and you know you get a f you get a better feeling of the dimensions of a space of the space if you place it down you know see me placing the gates on these uh, lines so I know okay this will be one sleeping quarter and um, next to this another one and then there's another one and and, and the, the, the space in front I know is big enough for the animals uh, as a separation area uh, as a running area so I know it works and yeah it, it only can help so a small tip on the side if you want to make indoor spaces and you are not sure about the space or what space you have available and uh, mark it down before with plaster or with uh, art shapes whatever you like and then you get better feeling and we are now making um, the separation or the holding cells and I in fact um, plant three in one for the females one for the males further back and one in the middle 
that will be for um, yeah does and their their babies. So they have uh, an own uh, an own area where they can sleep and uh, chill. Maybe also get their babies. So it's less trouble, a little bit more quiet for them. They are not with the, uh, with the rest. And the males are also separated, as said, because of their aggressions towards females in the um, breeding season. So yeah, um, the idea for the habit as it was um, was coming from another real life zoo, and the idea to have the habitat here um, actually comes from down to the idea to separate the whole zoo into four areas. I think I have now. I have to check my uh, my little notes. Um, I think we have woodlands, mountains, um, wetlands, and uh, prairie, so grasslands. And this habitat basically functions as a separator between already two of these areas, um, the grasslands and the woodlands. And you can view this habitat from two sides. And yeah, you get a good view of the animals from either side, so it's not like one side is missing out if you decide to go left or if you decide to go right. And as fellow deer are also known not only to live in forests, but also in more grassy areas on fields and farmlands, I said it would be nice, it would be a good idea, or I thought it would be nice to have them as a separator, also because it's a very simple habitat, nothing too exciting. Um, Otherwise, yeah, it might be a little bit uh, distract from the what later to come, like the animals like uh, later coming, like the puma or the wolves or anything. And yeah, now making the um, pulley system, the cable system for um, the big outside door, so you can pull this rope down. It will later, I will change it later in post production a little bit. Uh, you can ch yeah pull this rope down, and you can close the doors from this keeper space out there. Um, despite um, fellow deers not being aggressive animals, um, they are more shy than anything else, even the males, towards humans. Um, it's better to have some um, distance between the animals, maybe if one, if one is sick or if they are uh, scared, because fellow deers are easily scared. Um, you have some distance between them and you can easily manage everything from out there. Um, but another note, uh, or another thing to know is that fellow deers can get quite, um, yeah, they can adjust to humans or they can get, um, they are known that they at, at some point recognize their uh, keepers at, um, and even interact with them, um, feeding from their hands and everything. So fellow deers aren't, um, are shy to strange things, to no loud noises and everything. That's why it also makes this very woody area, so they have a lot of uh, private space. But um, if they know something or if they know a person for a longer time, they get comforted with it, um, they feed from their hands, they even come to get snuggles and um, to be uh, yeah, brushed from them, uh, by them. And this is quite nice. I think this is also the reason why many people in America, um, as far as I read it, uh, started um, having these deers as basically as a hoofstock or as a farm species, um, keeping them on their lands, much like cows or sheep. I have no clue so far. Maybe someone in the comments can help me with this. For what they are good or what products, apart, outside from the meat, I think, is the obvious one um, they are kept for or just for um, yeah the fun of it. But yeah, um, I will leave you guys now to the rest of the speed build with a little bit more, a uh, little bit of music, and in the end we will this time we will not have, um, we will not have a real life, a real time part. But instead I made a little bit of a cinematic. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I it was my first time, so always if you have ideas to improve anything. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, a little cinematic at the end so you can see the whole habitat um, in real life as the animals explore it. And yeah, I hope I see you in the next video um, next week. So we'll see what it will be, if it will be uh, tips and tricks or another one of Raven Creek. But yeah, I hope I see you there then. And until now, I wish you a great day. Always remember, you are awesome and you matter to the world. So yeah, don't let anyone um, pull you down. So have an awesome day, have an awesome week and stay safe. And I see you 
in the next video. Goodbye everyone, bye bye! Papu Noma! Mm.